welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast, filled with marketing and leadership tips on launching and growing your business with your host, Deanne Mora. Today I want to do things a little bit differently, and we're going to have a, a marketing AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything. And so I really want to give back to this group who has done so much for me and also to some of our fellow colleagues who are joining us today in the room and just help with any marketing strategy or tactical questions that you might have. I'll be able to answer anything from things to do on your website, on your social, SEO, what the heck's up with AI, whatever comes to mind. So while you're thinking of your questions, I'll give you just a little bit of, of background on me. So I started my entrepreneurial career rather young. I think I was probably 13 when I was selling customized pencils and wrapping paper door to door from the Regal catalog in Canada where I grew up. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody remembers that one, but or if it was even a thing down here. But that was my first experience. And then I went from, after I, I graduated high school, I went off to business school and I got a undergrad in business and as part of that experience I when I was a, a senior although we can call them that then that's an American thing but despite that when I was a senior I was tagged to run the small business consulting program uh, within the university uh, so that was a kind of a partially in the fall and then into the summer program where uh, we would and this was free small businesses would come to us and I had people on my team who were studying accounting, so you'd have somebody show up with a, literally a shoebox full of receipts and say, help me. Um, and other businesses that were either starting or they needed some help with their marketing, and we would help with with putting together their marketing plans. Everything was very different back then, because remember, there was no digital marketing at that time. So things were quite different, so we were helping them a lot with kind of their strategy and how they could grow their business. And that was kind of my first taste of an agency, because that's really um, you know, what I've, I've come to run now. But before that, when I graduated, um, I started working in uh, corporate America. And so I, uh, sorry, we're all laughing at the way. <laughs> Take a moment. All right, I'll just, uh, be good? Okay. I started out working in corporate America and I, I had a number of roles that were always on the strategy side of technology, so I've always been very close to technology in my career, although I wouldn't characterize myself as a technical person. And so through my career, I started to grow into larger roles, into leadership roles, and then I looked around and I was like, there's a bunch of other people that I'm seeing who have undergrad degrees, so I need to do one better, so I'm going to go off and get an MBA. So I, I then went off and did my MBA part-time while I was still working so I could continue on with my career. And then one thing led to another. I was in, I was doing a number of roles in, in kind of leadership and consulting and marketing and operations. And I've had through that experience, through the 26 years of that first phase of my career, the opportunity to travel the world. I had, I was in Mexico City working with clients where I'd go on the weekend to the pyramids and I remember standing on the pyramid of the sun and looking at the pyramid of the moon and thinking, damn, I'm getting paid for this. This is like the coolest thing ever. I got to go to Australia, see the little penguins and uh, all the things that are, it's like just an amazing experience. I lived in London for a year. So I had a chance to travel around Europe and see all of that. So it really, anyone who has not had the chance to travel the world, it is literally the best thing I think that you can do just for for yourself and just to give you a different perspective on business. Those were just wonderful opportunities. <laughs> Did that, as I mentioned, for, um, for 26 years, so a lot of consulting. I had the opportunity to work with 30 of the Fortune 500. I worked in boardrooms with presented to different boards of directors. So I've seen things work at scale. Lots of cool stuff, but nothing ever happens where you live, and so you're basically on the road in that kind of a role when you're a consultant. And it does get old after a while. And so I was a little tired of being on the road four days a week, and then trying to scramble to get stuff done in the 
the weekend and really having not much of a life. And so I decided to leave that first phase of my career and start my own business. I've launched my agency, which is Zen Change. You can find us at zenchange.com. And we are a full service marketing agency. So we do everything from websites to social media to copywriting, emails, paid advertising, etc. And we also work with our clients who are, for the most part, small businesses like the people in this room, <coughs> and just help them with a little bit of their strategy and then how to really optimize their budgets. And then about three years ago, I also started another firm, which is called The Alchemy Firm. And that's the firm under which I do fractional CMO consulting. So if you're not sure what a fractional CMO is, it's basically a part-time chief marketing officer. Within those roles, I go into companies that are a little bit bigger. So typically, they're going to be about 20 million and up. Or they are startups that are on that trajectory. Or in some cases, I'll help them with their pitch decks and getting ready for funding if they're at the the pre-seed stage. So what we are able to do in that role is if I'm a fractional CMO for a client, I'm building a team within that client and I'm trying to hone that team, but then they don't always have all the skills they need, so I'm able to also reach into my agency and pull in any of the part-time skills that we need. So that's a little bit of a summary on me and I'd love to just open it up for any questions that any of you might have on marketing. Ow. Should I start a podcast? But I have a follow up to that. Does it, it takes so much time? It doesn't take as much time as you think. And the should you start a podcast, it really depends on your personality. So if you're a very outgoing person, as I know you are, then <laughs> I know you are. You're not shy to speak in front of other people. You can record a podcast on your iPhone and you can. You can record it on a Zoom, you can record it just natively on your phone, you can grab the audio track, and you can get someone to help you and just edit it, have a professional intro, upload it to all of the podcast channels. And sometimes people think that I have to, there's so much preparation, there's so much that I need to know to start a podcast, but look around the people who are in this room with you. you Marcia could, you has could, a very good one, by the way, sorry, I've been watching. <laughs> Marcia, That's great. You could interview other people on a podcast. I mean, I've had a podcast for several years, which if you're interested on Spotify, the Entrepreneur Podcast. With you. <laughs> it's a little commercial. But it's really not as difficult as you think. But if you're the person who is more of a, a very introverted writer, then don't start a podcast, start a blog. If you're more extroverted and you're more comfortable speaking, then, you know, start a podcast. You have the option of doing either a video <coughs> podcast or an audio podcast. So if you're comfortable on camera and for some of the litigators in the room who I know can stand up and... Uh, oh, okay. Two minutes, not just because I'm a litigator. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not, 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 he's all right, go up with the, the blogs. Can Chat GPT write my blog? That's exactly So that's actually a really great question. So I'm sure everyone's seeing <laughs> what's, 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 what's going on. Chat, so the question yeah, is, can Chat GPT write my blog for me? So let me tell you, AI is disrupting every industry. And if you don't think it's disrupting yours, then look again. But you can get Chat GPT to write a blog. You can just say, what, Dante, what's your business again? And commercial insurance. Commercial insurance. So you could say, ChatGPT, write me a blog about some topic in commercial insurance, and it'll just spit it out for you. But it's, so the way that there, it creates a digital signature, which can be read by Google. So you basically have bot to bot. So you can use it, but it's not gonna help you rank for SEO because Google is gonna recognize it as being AI generated. So you need to rewrite it and massage it a little bit, but it's great for generating ideas. So that's how I would use it. Generate an outline, generate ideas, give yourself some things to start with. JJ. So I know there's social media influencers, whatever they do, <laughs> would they help me for my business? They could. So that when you think of social media influencers, a lot of people think of the Kardashians, right? And 
there's very few people in this room who could afford one shout out from a Kardashian for their business, as helpful as that might be. But there are millions of what we call micro-influencers, which are people who maybe have a couple of thousand or so followers in a particular niche. And a lot of the times, they'll be quite happy to create a reel or a post for you for two, three hundred bucks. And if they are doing it in a convincing manner, then they can absolutely help bring you an audience. So that should be a part of your strategy to consider. Cool. And follow up to that question. I just jumped in, I'm sorry. JJ's target market would be similar, right? So business, where you would get this influence from more like a B2B type of scenario? Think, put yourself in the shoes of one of your potential clients and what they might look for, and then see who comes up. And you're gonna want, and there's actually tools where you can check, because some people are buying followers and doing things that aren't exactly legit. Right. There are some tools where you can assess influencers. There's like databases of influencers where you can find them. So there are some ways that you can do it systematically or just look at who's coming up when you search for how you would want a client to push you. I think you, we're done. Thanks. Actually, I was wondering what that algorithm switch is that's tripping up your people. <laughs> so the algorithms for social media and for Google are always changing. So it's, it's definitely important to work with people who are keeping up on top of that and studying up on it and testing and seeing what's working. But there are some recent algorithm changes with Instagram that a lot of people were, their posts were not showing up as prominently as they were previously. So the algorithms are really starting to, to favor more actual genuine content and connections. So some of the, the people are always using tricks, right? The algorithms are always trying to adjust in order to compensate for the tricks. If I look at on Instagram, for example, right now, <coughs> carousels and reels are killing it. That's a great way to, to get your content out, but it has to be content that is interesting that people actually want to look at and follow. So keep it legit. <laughs> you can't, just going crazy on hashtags is not cutting it anymore. Make sure that your content is genuine and that it's hitting topics that people are really interested in seeing or reading about. I've heard that video gets the most traction on social media, but I'm not really an entertainer. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, That's a great question. video, uh, I think that reflects a lot of people in this room, actually. Yeah. Not everyone is super comfortable on video, and that's okay. So you can actually edit videos. So let's say you have either just a little clip of yourself and then you can very easily add stock. You could do your voiceover to a number of images that you piece together. There's a lot of great apps that you can get on your iPhone where you can create videos <coughs> that don't necessarily have to be you staring at the camera feeling like you're on stage. Thank you. Great. Wait, um, it's going on forever. Alex, you know what? You're going to present this week, my friend. That's a question. That's a question. <laughs> What's the best way to grow a marketing budget if the company's small and they don't have a big budget? That's a great question. So, how do you grow your company if you're small? My answer is going to be the answer that I think everyone in this room will probably resonate with, and that is networking. My networking experience when I first started eight, nine, ten years ago was. I would go to networking meetings like this one, um, but these meetings are really just for the purpose of making those connections. You don't get business out of these meetings. You get business from having one-to-ones with people. And I used to have almost my quote-unquote office hours at, what was it, Small Tea in the That's Gables? Right. I think a lot of us were doing that, and we met there a few times, and I would just stack them up. I would, like Tuesday was my networking day, and I would have two one-to-ones in the morning, and then I would go to my lunch meeting. And I did that for years. Yep. And through doing that, I was able to build my network, build my business, and now I have so much business that just, I'm very thankful, comes to me organically. And I have a great network that I could reach into. I'm known as one of those people who it's like, oh, if you need someone, ask Deanne, because she's got, as we used to say, I got a guy, right? Whatever you ask, I got a guy or a gal. And it just, it comes from doing the legwork. In marketing, it's always a trade-off between time and money. If you have no money, you're going to need to invest in time. And if you have no time, you're going to need to invest in money. That's pretty much it.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we got one more. Oh, listen. In this era of AI, me being, not being this super confident video person, that I just put my face on an AI and just have it do my whole video? Yeah, <laughs> there are some wow. super yeah, crazy cool. AI tools out oh, there. Yeah. We can connect one to one and I can share yeah. some interesting ones with you. That was my follow up question. Do you guys do that? Yeah, yeah, oh, you can absolutely oh. do that. There, you gotta be careful. So yeah. there's all sorts of stuff going on with deep fakes, oh, which is basically what you're describing, which can be used for ill or, or for, for good, good things, right? Yeah. Not good things. <laughs> but using it for good, you can absolutely um, AI yourself into a video. Right. <laughs> so, I think everybody, you should have a staff. Everybody, when you want to wonder about the end, right now. Right. Should be booked out right. for the rest of the show. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Thank you.